Hey guys, I'm here with my Guardian Druid tanking guide for Legion Pre-Patch, patch, patch 7.0.3. In this guide I'm going to go over your talents, spells and abilities, your stat priority, and then your tanking rotation, which is very, very similar for both single target and AoE, and then a demonstration of that, that rotation on these dummies, and then just macros and add-ons you can use to help you out. Let's go ahead and look at your talents. In your first tier, you're going to want to default to Bristling Fur for most situations. It's a 40 second cooldown ability, and it causes you to generate extra rage based on how much damage you've taken for the next 8 seconds or while it's active, basically. It's a nice rage generator. It is really, really good for single target and even AoE. But if there is a lot of long-lived ads, so ads that are up a long time, maybe 3, 4 or more, then Blood Frenzy is a viable alternative. Blood Frenzy is a passive, just makes your thrash, which is your AoE bleed, also generate extra rage every time it deals damage, not just when you use it. So if ads are up for a long time, then this actually helps you a lot with your rage generation, and you need to have several up, maybe three or four at least, for the full duration and constantly. Otherwise, Bristling Fur tends to be a bit better even then. Now, Brambles just doesn't help you with your rage generation at all, just does a bit of extra damage, so I don't really recommend it over the other two since they both help you do extra damage by giving you more rage and you help your survivability again by giving you more rage. Level 30, these are all movement talents so you kind of pick what you want. I like to default to Guttural Roars. It reduces the cooldown of your Stampeding Roar by half and also makes it a much bigger range so it's more raid wide than it used to be, kind of like the old Stampeding Roar Glyph used to do. Displace of Beast can be nice to get from one area to the next for for example like on Archimon going between the two Allure of Flames area but just keep in mind that it does take you into cat form so it takes you out of bear form which can be really dangerous if you're tanking actively at the time just keep that in mind and then wild charge it's like a warrior charge just gets you from add to add or wherever you need to go and it does root whatever it hits for four seconds so this is kind of whatever you prefer guttural roars does help your whole raid though a bit more and more often so that's why I like this, but the other two are definitely viable. It's kind of whatever your preference is and what you like. At 45, you got our three affinities. I like to default to Restoration Affinity because it gives you Sarah's Gift, which is a passive heal that will heal you first until you're full, and then it might heal someone else. But the active abilities in this tier are not very useful in general, so the only thing you might use is Swift Mend from this talent if you're not tanking, because if you are tanking, it will take you out of bear and you'll probably die. But the passive heal is really, really nice, which is like why I like to recommend this. Now, if you want, you can take Balance Affinity just to mess around a bit. You do get 5 yard range added to all your abilities, so you have a little bit of range. In addition, you do do a little bit more DPS if you're not tanking. You can go into Moonkin form and do a little Moonkin rotation, a mini rotation. So... Technically, this could be like a small increase in damage as long as you're not tanking. But as soon as you need to tank, you obviously need to go back to bear. So really what you're looking at is the 5 yard extra range on all your abilities. Feral Affinity, not great. It just gives you movement speed and you have a bunch of movement speed already by default as a druid. So, and none of these abilities, again, are that great. So generally, Restoration Affinity, your go-to. And then if you want to mess around with balance, you can. Level 60 is all CC, so kind of whatever fits your fancy. Typhoon, I like. I like messing around, like pushing stuff around, and sometimes you can interrupt cast with it, like the imps on Zulharak, or shoving them in closer to the group if you don't have a Gorfin's Grasp available. Uh, mass Entanglement, you can use, of course, for an AoE route if you need that. It's an extra route as well. It's not casted, it's instant. So that's pretty nice, and it doesn't take you out of your shapeshift form. But roots can break to damage very easily. And then you can also use Mighty Bash if you need a stun. So pretty much whatever you want in this tier, whatever suits the situation and your needs as a raid. Level 75, Galactic Guardian is going to be a go-to. It causes your damage to sometimes trigger an automatic Moonfire on your whatever the damage hit. So that in AoE situations you don't have to apply Moonfire to everything individually. Because you will actually be using Moonfire as part of your rotation, which we'll get into more later. But also when you get this free Moonfire, which applies to whatever the damage is hitting, 
you can then use another Moonfire after that's buffed and gives you 15 Rage. So it becomes a very nice, consistent Rage generator for both single target and AoE. This makes it really, really attractive in pretty much all situations. Now, you can take Incarnation if you want. It's still a big 3-minute cooldown. lets you spam your Mangle and your Taunt to your Growl and makes your Mangle cleave. So this is really good for burst generation at the start of a fight, for example, or if you're picking up an important ad somewhere down the line. But it's a pretty long cooldown, and it doesn't give you as much consistency, obviously, because it only lasts 30 seconds, and then you have to wait two and a half minutes for that cooldown to come back up. Now, Soul of the Forest, which is not that great right now, doesn't help you in AoE at all, because your Mangle is a single target, since you're not taking Incarnation, and it makes it generate a bit more rage and deal a bit more damage. But Galactic Guardian is going to give you more rage and has applications in AoE as well as single target. So generally Galactic Guardian is going to be a go-to, and then Incarnation if you want that burst. At level 90, Guardian of Illusion is going to be your go-to. It makes your Mangle, which you do use fairly often, increase the duration of your active mitigations, either your physical damage one or magic one, or the healing of your, your self-heal, Frenzy Regen, by a decent amount. So this basically gives you kind of passive survivability as you just do your rotation and you can control what you use it on, which is really, really, really nice. Now, if you do need big survival cooldowns more often than their base cooldown allows, you can take Survival of the Fittest on fights where this is really important and necessary. And it just reduces the cooldown of Barkskin and Survival Instincts by one third, making Barkskin about the one minute cooldown like it used to be, and then Survival Instincts, I believe, a two, two minute and some odd second cooldown rather than a four minute one. So it does allow you to use them more often. So if the fight requires big survival cooldowns more often than every four minutes or every minute and a half, then this is a really good talent because it allows you to use those more and line them up with boss cooldowns. Earth Warden is not great. You basically reduce auto attack damage every so often by 30%. And auto attack damage tends to be the least dangerous thing. Plus, you don't really have control over when it happens, when it procs, or when... You know which which auto attack the boss takes or uses uh, gets reduced. Plus, again, you can't control it, and there's no it doesn't reduce anything about like special attacks, magic damage, etc. So just not great compared to the other two. Level 100, Rend and Tear I like the most. It does a good amount of survivability, and it increases your damage. So when Thrash gets the three stacks on the target or actually any stacks, it reduces the damage that they do to you and increases the damage they take from you by 2% per Thrash stack. Now Thrash stacks up to three times, so this means over the course of a fight, generally on a boss, this will be a 6% damage reduction and damage increase from you on the boss or targets. And that is really, really good. So it's both survivability and extra damage. Pulverize does technically give you a bit more damage reduction, so if you really, really, really need that extra 2%, you can use this. And what it does is it consumes two stacks of your Thrash on whatever target you're using it on, does a little bit of damage, and then reduces the damage you take by 8% for 20 seconds. So essentially it's 2% more damage reduction, but you get no damage benefit from it. Which is why I like Rend and Tear, because they're both rather important. And the, di the difference in survivability is really, really minuscule. But it is there if you really want to maximize your survivability. Now, Lunar Beam is an interesting ability. With one and a half minute cooldown. It just does AoE damage and then heals you for a not insignificant amount over eight seconds. So if you really need burst AoE in a fight, you could use this. But generally, the other two are going to do you better in damage and survivability. So those are your talents. Now let's look at your spells and abilities as a Guardian Druid. First, we've got Mangle. It's a short cooldown melee ability. It just generates rage for you, does more damage to bleeding targets, and it gets reset pretty often by Gore, this passive ability. What Gore does is when you Thrash, Swipe, or Moonfire, you have a chance to reset your Mangle cooldown, and then it makes it generate more rage as well. Now next we do have Thrash. It's an AoE ability, but it's also part of your single target rotation. It just applies a bleed and can stack up to three times and generates rage every time you use it. Next we've got Moonfire. Now Moonfire is now usable in bear form and it won't take you out, which is good. This is good, which is why you can use it in your rotation. And it applies a dot, does a little damage. You can use this to kind of pick up adds a little bit that are 
out of the way that are far away if you don't have your growl up, for example. So it's pretty nice to have this ranged damage ability. Next up we've got Swipe. Pretty simple, does AoE damage, doesn't cost anything, doesn't generate any rage, kind of your filler spell, nothing else to do. And then Maul here, costs some rage, does a little bit of damage, and has a really short cooldown. It's kind of a rage dump if there's literally nothing else to spend your rage on. And then we've got your movement, your stampeding roar. Generally a two minute cooldown, but right now it's a one minute cooldown because I've taken Gutural Roars. And it just buffs the speed of everyone in the range of it by 60%. So it's a nice movement speed buff for people around you, as well as yourself. Then do your Skull Bash, your Interrupts. Just interrupt the spellcasting that you need to on different bosses. Then we've got Frenzied Regeneration, which is a two-charge system. Heal, it's a self-heal, and it heals you for half of the damage you've taken over the last five seconds, over three seconds. Meaning it's just a hot... So if you took 100,000 damage in the last 5 seconds, it heals you for 50,000 as a hot over 3 seconds. And it does have a fairly long recharge. It will heal you for a minimum of 5% of your max health though. So even if you've taken less damage than that, it will heal you for that. And it only costs 10 rage now. But you've got your taunt, of course, your growl, 8 second cooldown. And then we've got your active ability, your active mitigations. Now we've got Iron Fur. Costs 45 rage, has a very short cooldown, half a second. And increases your armor by 75% for 6 seconds. Now it's interesting to note, if you use multiple Iron Furs in quick succession, it will overlap. So if you use your first Iron Fur, it will give you 75% extra armor. And then 2 seconds later you use another Iron Fur. Then for those for that overlap time, those four seconds where the first iron fur is still active, you'll have 150% armor. And then once the first one ends after the four, you know, six seconds total, then you'll be back to 75%. So it does overlap, but you won't increase the duration at all of your iron fur. So just keep that in mind. You can stack iron furs for bigger armor gains, although it's pretty expensive. So it's if you're going to do that, make sure you pull up rage. But we'll get into that in the rotation section now. Mark of Ursul is your magic damage active mitigation. This does not stack the same way, but it just reduces the magical damage you take by 30%. So, one for physical damage, armor, and one for magical damage. Then we do have a short cooldown, Bark Skin, one and a half minutes now, and it just reduces the damage you take by 20%. And it does do some spell cast protection, but you don't really cast that often as a bear, so not super useful. You can use it while you're stunned, frozen, incapacitated, feared, or asleep, and so that's pretty nice, but it's a mini cooldown, 20% reduction for minor damage, but it is very, very nice to have. You've got your giant defensive cooldown, your survival instincts. It's now a four-minute recharge on a two-charge system. It's a lot longer than it used to be. It reduces the damage you take by 50%, and it's got two charges, so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, just a really, really long cooldown timer now. And then we've got some movement speed, we've got dash, 3 minute cooldown, makes you zip around real quickly. Now it does put you in the cat form, so be careful about using this if you're tanking actively at the time. And then we do have prowl, which is a stealth, which is not really relevant to you. And that's pretty much it. You do have remove corruption, which does remove curses and poisons if you need to, but it's probably not best that you use it because, as you can see here, it takes you out of bear form, which is really, really dangerous. And then we do have Rebirth, which again, takes you out of combat, but is a battle res in case you're not tanking actively, or something like that. So those are your spells and abilities. Now let's go ahead and look at your stat priority as a Guardian Druid. What you're going to want is a lot of Mastery, and what Mastery does now for you is increases your max health and the healing you receive by a percent amount, and it also increases your attack power. Now it doesn't reduce the damage you take, so it's pretty unique as far as tank mastery stats have been in pre-patch for legion but it does increase the healing you take and your max health which is again an indirect survivability mechanic now haste comes after this and what haste does is it reduces your auto attack timer so you swing more often which generates more rage and then it also reduces the cooldown of mangle and thrash and maul and things like that and frenzied regen and which then, of course, increases your survivability because you're generating one more rage. Two, your frenzy region allows you to heal more often if you need it, and so on. Now, 
After that comes versatility, just a straight survivability increase, and critical strike after that because it has no interaction with any of your abilities. If you're comfortable where your health is, where your mastery is, and you're surviving just fine, you can start to prioritize haste over mastery because it's more active, and at a certain point, you can get so much health and so much healing that you don't need it anymore. You don't need more mastery. So just keep that in mind. So to recap, in general, you're going to want mastery, then haste, then versatility, and then critical strike. And then at high levels of mastery where you feel comfortable, like, yes, I'm not dying anymore, you can prioritize haste over mastery. But that's really the only change there. So that was your stat priority. Now let's go ahead and talk about your tanking rotation. As I mentioned at the start of this video, it's very similar for both single target and multi target, so I'll get into the minor differences in a bit. But basically, for single target, what you're going to want to do is any procs, if you're using Galactic Guardian, if you have any Moonfire procs, use those because it generates the most rage for you. And then after that, Mangle, and then Thrash, and then Swipe to kind of fill the dead time. You can use Mole, but be very careful you don't rage dive yourself. It's really just a rage dump if you're generating too much rage, but you are generally better off using Iron Fur or Mark of Ursul for active mitigation instead of spending the rage on Maul. Now, of course, if you're not tanking, you're not using these two things, so you can then use Maul for extra damage, but in general, you're not going to want to use it very often. Now, if you're not using Galactic Guardian, just be aware that Moonfire, you still want to have that dot going, rolling, so at least keep it up after you've mangled and thrashed. But with Galactic Guardian, you're pretty much going to have a Moonfire active all the time because you'll be using it for the proc. And so you don't have to worry about that. Now, as far as your active mitigation goes, just use whatever you need to. Iron Fur is physical damage reduction, and Mark Reversal is magic damage reduction. So whatever the incoming damage is that you're trying to reduce, use the appropriate one. You can pull up your rage to either use both, so Mark Reversal and then Iron Fur as well, to kind of reduce a mixed damage that's coming in, both physical and magic, or you can spam Iron Fur on a, again to stack the armor buff on itself if there's huge physical damage. So kind of just react to whatever damage is coming in. As far as Frenzied Regeneration goes, it's something you want to use after you've taken a large chunk of damage. So make sure in the last five seconds you have taken a lot of damage if you're going to use this, otherwise it's not going to do very much for you. It is 10 rage, so it's pretty cheap. So just make sure you have it up for periods that you know you will get low, you will have taken a lot of damage, stuff like that. So Because you don't want to use both charges and then be kind of stuck out there without the ability to use this when this huge hit comes in from the boss, for example. So just kind of monitor how the flow of the fight goes, what periods of, like you take the extra damage from the boss, and just line it up with those. So use it afterward, after a chunk of big of damage comes your way. As far as Bristling Fur, you just kind of want to use it on cooldown as much as possible or line it up with a lot of damage incoming. It does give you more rage based on how much damage you take. So you do want to make sure you're at least tanking when you use it. You don't want to just use it willy-nilly like if you're not actually, if you don't have aggro, for example. But use it to generate rage as much as you can. Now, that is your single target rotation. And essentially your AoE or multi-target rotation is about the same. Instead, though, you do prioritize Thrash over Mangle rather than Mangle over Thrash. Um, but you still use your Galactic Guardian procs top priority. So it's pretty much the same thing. And the thing is, you are using all four of these abilities anyway. Your Mangle, your Thrash, your Moonfire, and your Swipe. So even if you have the priority quote-unquote wrong, you'll end up using maybe Thrash one global cooldown later than you should have versus Mangle, and it's not a huge, huge deal. The only thing that you could consider is if you're not tanking and you just want to do maximum AoE damage, you pretty much just Thrash into Swipe Spam. Of course, still get your Rage from your Moonfire, but literally for just damage, if you're not tanking anything, you could do that, but it's really just the same rotation. Just swap the place of your Thrash and your Mangle which are kind of high priority anyway. So they're very, very similar, and you won't notice a huge difference either way. Just make sure you're keeping aggro on stuff you need to. So if you need to pick up stuff with Swipe, for example, because there's more stuff spawning, then go ahead and use that to pick up Threat. But you still want to do the same stuff, generate Rage the same way, just slightly higher priority on Thrash. 
Alright, now I'll demonstrate your tank rotation now on this dummy. As you notice, when you pop into bear form, you get 20 extra rage. Do make sure you're doing that right before the pull, or pretty soon before the pull, just for a little extra rage at the start. So, I'll get into bear form. Oops, get into bear form, there we go. And then I'll start with mangle, and then a thrash, and then get a moonfire dot up, and then just swipe. Now I might pop my iron fur just to get the early reduction, and a bristling fur as well, to then get extra rage. And then iron fur again to spend my rage. Now I've got a moonfire proc, so I'll use that. Mangles up, moonfire proc again. I've got, I'll use two iron furs here to kind of help out with the healing. And then I'll frenzy regen for a little healing. Swipe to fill. I thrash there into moonfire proc. And then so on and so forth. So just kind of use stuff as it's up on cooldown. Thrash, mangle, use my active mitigation. Maybe I'll use survival instincts to kind of help out with my health here. Pop my trinket for health or an absorption shield even. Moonfire proc, frenzied regen, just to heal, iron fur, and so on and so forth. Bam, swipe. Got moonfire proc, so use that. Use some rage before, so I don't uh, cap. And then we've got bristling fur, and you can just, you know, you see there I actually capped up for a little bit, and that's really bad. You just want to make sure you avoid that. So that's your tank rotation. Just kind of use stuff that's on available and what you need as they come off cooldown, and just remember that priority to keep your moonfire up their proc especially like this proc i have right now and then mangle and thrash now again for aoe it's pretty much the same thing just you would thrash before you mangle slightly higher priority so that's it for your tank rotation now as far as macros and add-ons i don't use any macros right now there's nothing really worth macroing together in my opinion and for add-ons i am using weak ores to track certain things right now what i'm tracking is the galactic guardian buff the moonfire buff so i don't have to look down at it but it does actually shine like it lights up as you probably saw during the demonstration so you don't necessarily need that i also have guardian of a loon tracker just so i know when i i know for sure yes i have a longer iron fur i have a longer mark of ursal or I have a bigger heal something like that but again it's, it always happens after you mangle so you can you don't necessarily need one of those now, as far as the cooldowns, I'm just tracking Frenzied Regen right now, both the timer left for the cooldown to come up and how many stacks I've got, since it's a two stack ability, or two charge ability, excuse me. And then there's the cooldowns for Bristling Fur, Mangle and Thrash, so I don't have to look down to see when they're up. You could also, of course, track things like Bark Skin, like Survival Instincts, and so on. But that's pretty much it for this video. So if you liked it, Feel free to hit it with a like, leave comments if you'd like, and ask any questions and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I will be producing more of these as I can. And thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed. Cheers.